which is one of the big favorites for this spot duo for the Callista. Karia loves to play the Gragas. He's so aggressive on it in the early game, and then he's great for setting up team fights later on with the Fates Call. T1 have a standard draft. As so we are getting ready to jump into match 71, game one. When you consider how powerful Renekton is on those first few objectives. Yep. And here we go. The root comes down, and uh oh, Kerry is in a really rough spot. I like this angle, actually, but the flash over the wall from Umpty means he is absolutely dead. And here we go. Here we go. I mean, this is what I'm talking about. You suddenly get the ball rolling, uh, you know, especially if you're Lilia, right? But. <laughs> which is massive. That's a tool he's not going to have for follow-up engages, especially on these early objectives where you can flash Body Slam. It's all about the Gravitas. You get the Gravitum to proc, you get the stun, and then there's a follow-up. Umpty's here. He has the exact right weapon for the job. The timing here is perfect. Before, you know, it's really scary to be uh -oh. anywhere. Uh -oh. Look at this positioning for Delight. Karia Gumiusi. This is a double knock-up, and this is going to be such an easy kill off to Karia. He is so dead. And he doesn't even have I to mean... use his sleep. <laughs> yeah. For it because... His flash is coming up soon. you got to be oh. scared of that. Chain's going to land here. That's his second chain. There's a lot of CC coming in onto this Renekton. and he has to flash away as Faker says, no, nope, I got this. And that's a secure win, but Bro have total control over this Rift Herald. They're going to last hit it. Umpty does pick up the eye, and now they're just trying to get away. Karia still level 5, not able to follow up there. So we're going to take a look at this bottom exchange once again delight there's no wards in this brush he's got hex flash maximum range gets the double knock up here and umpty's here if umpty hits the double he actually gets a double sleep and that might actually be two kills but yeah. instead he doesn't even need to use it that's the scariest thing and i think yaharang had just teleported in here yeah, Karyo was like just it. waiting for it and uh well you're just not getting away from this much stuff basically once you get locked down by double chains grouped up right now. Gumi's is going to have to deal with this wave, though. I don't really like this for and Juan. Delight is just getting in there. Carry is like, well, now I have to engage. And where did the Lilia go? Oh, no. <laughs> he just immediately dies. And that was the one guy you really <laughs> had all of your gold on, right? Yeah. He was the one setup, man. And now he's just dead. So he... Oh, man. This is just a lane where you're never going to be happy. I mean, Yaharang doesn't get to play the game in this no. one. Like, he can't even enter the lane. Like, I called it a lane, but actually it's just Faker bullying a, a crocodile. Like, it's, it's really sad. <laughs> <laughs> it's very mean, actually. And he's, he's dead. dead. Yep. I, I, he, <laughs> 5v5 fight once again, but look at Kana's flank angle here. Does not have a Narbar, unfortunately, but he can yeah. get one. Now, you, you know, this, this flank angle definitely very annoying. And Faker, he has some work to do. He has to get more poke down. We see the boomerangs as well as uh, Hoyo just says, okay, I'm going in, guys. Uh, yeah. Forever alone stays well, true. <laughs> oh, no. I, guess, I guess that's the fate he wanted at the end of the day. And uh, unfortunately, what that means is that everybody has to run away and just get kited down and getting that winning win cast because actually all they needed. Yeah. Big as, sleep. Uh, here we go again. The Fate's Call is massive. The sleep. We'll see if it can do anything. The damage is trying to be used here as we do get the kill on Takaria. And Faker, an owner, a little bit zoned away. Kumi Yusi's like, wait, where's my team? He still kills Yaharong. <laughs> he's gonna, and you know what? I mean, he's kiting pretty nicely here, but the flash comes in and now he should be dead. As he does come in, and owner says, uh, well, maybe me and Faker can get something done. Faker He's gonna trying. come in and get the kill. And he does not go back to where he started. So Hoya not able to follow up on that one. A very messy and all over the place fight. T1 just making it more interesting for us, you know? <laughs> It looks it looks a little bit too easy if they don't uh, overextend for a second and then carry a really epic trade. Yeah, um, Umpty with the question mark ping. I like that. Yeah. That's the way you can question mark ping your enemies, by the way. Again. This is such fantastic play. They slow yeah. down the Drake take, and they're just playing the macro game. Kana. Ooh, look at that. Max range cask, although it is on to an Alistair, so maybe not the best. But we do have Fate's Call. Unfortunately, now Kumi Yusi's not in a great spot. He's trying to kite it out, but he will go down. And that's a trade they will take, but at the same time, I mean, this is this is like the thorn in their side that they just cannot <laughs> this find. This is the last game of Kana's promos. And this is the splinter under the skin. <laughs> Kana's like, I will win this game if my team be down. <laughs> yeah. I don't care if you guys are fighting. I'm just going to split push and end it. And it's even with the pick, it doesn't matter. they just so far ahead. Uh-oh. Well, Kana's dead. That, that was scary. Wouldn't have wanted to have uh, been Aphelios in that one. As, uh, yeah, I think they're just going to take it here. Just uh, some passive play. They let the dragon go down. They slowly kite it out, take the entire base. And Faker says, let me just get one more kill onto the crocodile. 
not going to be able to do so. 27 and a half minutes, T1. Take a pretty straightforward win. <laughs> I feel like the person that comes over and collects the POG paper, she was like, oh, like, why do I even need to come up here? <laughs> yeah. like, we already know who they're going to vote for. Like, this is one of the most obvious ones that we have here. I mean, 30,000 damage on LeBlanc in 27 minutes. It's over a thousand. I would have really liked to see a better challenge of this LeBlanc flex the Renekton top. I know it sounds weird to say, but you know that that's what they this would essentially have been doing. Yeah. Going to have so much agency in this game to harass the Lilia. And we'll see too, because remember last game, like I was alluding to when we had the like pass here as the wave crashes in. Yeah, and he's making this very obvious. Hoya is just gonna get stunned against the wall, and he knows he's absolutely dead. The ignite is ticking down, and the last tick will actually get the follow-up kill. Uh, in fact, but yeah, dude, the top laner's not using it, it's okay. That's some mobility for both of these guys. As Umpty is going to come up here and help crash this wave in. Kana, no flash, as you mentioned. Delight here as well. Faker has TP. I'm just kind of holding on to it for now. The TP used here by Lava. They're really just trying to zone them totally off of this turret. And they will be successful. I mean, that. it's going to cost Kana a lot of CS. And they're going to go in. The Delight's here. Yeah, they're actually going in, which is kind of questionable, as everybody on the side of T1 is very prepared for this play. But now trying to get back on top of Owner. There's the trade as they get the Rakan. Lava will go down. And now, with the Viego kind of going nuts, he's going to land that follow-up stun, as Umpty is desperately trying to get something done here. And the Gwen is quite annoying, but as long as you just kite them out, I think T1 eventually will win this trade as Faker's looking for the kill over the wall. One last auto will get it done as now they're getting on top of Umpty, and they will eventually finish them off. I mean, the problem is that you're doing this against Viego, whose kit is designed to skirmish like this. He has such great sustains. We're going to go really far back in time now and watch this once again. But his kit is designed to skirmish, you know? And actually, look at Hoya getting all of that damage done is what guarantees that this ticks down to the kill, so he just goes forward there, ends up hitting the Q. But the longer this fight goes, if the kills come through in any circumstance, like, you win this as T1 because you just have so much sustain. And Kana is just in the back here, like, I can't die, there's no way. And Gwen is also a champion that's difficult to kill, as you see, she's the last to go down here. Um, or one of the last, and Umpty has no mana, but he hits every single Q he possibly could have in this fight. But it's still, like, you know, if it was any other champion than the Viego, I think you might end up trading back better here, but you're just sadly not able to. Like, look at how low they get, but yeah. then he's like, I'm Viego, so <laughs> it doesn't matter. And meanwhile, we have Faker dying. Down he goes. As we were living in replay land there for a good, Times. you'll see a play like that as Lava's looking for an aggressive trade once again. And this is how you can take wins with the trades in this matchup, especially after he just took a kill down. The ultimate was used up here. He has flash by the advantage. Gwen. Like, it, you've got to be careful as Faker about this. Look, Umpty's here again. He's not, he is going to get out quickly enough. Or I oh, say that. Flash comes in and Faker's just dead. Lava knowing the cooldowns, and he's like, no, you're just going to go down. But Owner here, he's got that Subjugate down onto the Renekton. And Umpty's like, well, I'll just try to kite you out here and see how it goes. The sleep will come down. Rose down. Angry B! <laughs> can he get the kill? Yeah, I think so. One more Q will do it. He flashes away. Perfectly executed by Umpty oh, from good. Owner. As with no support down in the bottom lane, Henna is just a sitting duck. This is one way you can use the exhaust aggressively, as Gumiusi is tanking up a lot of the damage of the turret. And the Moonlight Vigil is going to miss as well, but the turret will get the job done. Not the not the blue one, but the... Aphelios or, turret. The uh, Aphelios turret. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this ended up being a almost disaster, actually, there on the bottom side of the map. In fact, Gumiusi does have to flash. <laughs> And this is going to be a free Rift Herald for Fred Brion, yep, counterwise on the map. And like, yes. like, you're starting to really see a lot of the power here is, we're going to go back and watch this moment. A lot of the power that you can have if you con constantly skirmish with this comp that Fred Brion is running. Commits the flash, gets his stun online. Owner has a really nice pillar and has to flash as well to actually get this kill. And, you know, with the sleep here and the damage over time that you're going to have as a Lilia, Unfortunately, you can't win this. You're just going to get kind of kited out. If the uh, bowling ball misses, then, you know, maybe you could make well an done, argument. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, had to, I had to bring it back. Yeah. As yeah, the Moonlight Vigil missing here was a little bit questionable. Um, 
But there's, you know, the heal here, the turret is doing so much damage. And is like, am I actually going to get a double kill? Meanwhile, uh, we're diving mid and into Renekton as Delight is here in the Tarm. And the knockup will be enough. So Delight gets there on time, and even the dive wasn't that clean. Right? No, it wasn't looking that great. Yeah. As they were getting in here, Rift Herald available now for Umpty. Plus, I mean, he could toss his Rift Herald down, and the Drake is, is right there to take two. I mean, you get everything out of this mistake here from T1. And Fred and Breon are going to take a pretty significant gold lead with this uh, crash in. Definitely, it should be a fairly easy escape here as well. Flight, the only one vulnerable. Lava's going to get another turret here on the bottom side of the map. And we had T1 with huge advantages last game. Showcase what they can do, you know, in terms of their macro. But it's not looking the same this time around. Yeah, things are actually pretty good for them. They got the pillar to zone them away. Delight is looking for a potential engage here as the turret shot hits Gumiusi. Umpty's here. Now the bowling ball is going to be dodged by everybody. As here we go, the Rakan comes in and the Renekton flank is gigantic. Look at Gumiusi, he's all alone. And down yeah. will go the Braum as well, carrying no hope for him. That's a nice capitalization on the aggressive push from T1. T1 are losing these trades on the map, and every time they try to force it, especially in the mid lane, they've been punished, right? Like, these if she can do a ton of poke, then Diego gets resets, right? Oh, the stun. Max Reigns comes in, and we got owner coming in. They didn't even need the trundle. Nope. What did he even do? He put a pillar down, I guess. I'm just here to kill the turret. <laughs> <laughs> and he's pretty good at doing that, and T1, T1 can dive in as they would like to. They can get a lot of value out of this Apelios as the Moonlight Vigil this time goes incredibly wide. Carry a left out by himself as they're desperately trying to chase into him. He'll just go for the stopwatch and say, well, you can take me, but don't take my friends. He's going to clear, now they're going to clear this vision and taking the Baron here, I think is realistic for Fred Breon. Baker got caught by that sleep, couldn't actually get involved in the fight. He's just going to bounce over the wall here, but you know, he can't make a huge impact. Kana's on the flank. There's just no real consistent damage here. I think they're considering taking the 5v4. The turn comes in. They blow up Owner immediately. And that's the jungle. They keep the Baron least importantly. Faker and Kana are threatening, but this is 3v5. And this isn't like yesterday. No. Uh, like the matchup we had between Genji and uh, I forget who it was in that second matchup. KT. KT. You know, we're we're yeah. living in. Uh, watch this sleep from Umpty, because he is able to hit Faker here. Then he goes in, goes forward, and Faker's actually still under the effects of the Q, so actually gets slept, so he can't be involved. If Faker could be threatening Umpty here, maybe you actually have a turn. But as you also pointed out, you know, Moonlight Vigil not hitting there in the previous fight, not available, and we go into this fight, and it's a really easy turn. And for T1, I think trying to contest this was a little bit desperate, you know? And then they are stuck here in a 3v5 that goes very, very badly. Okay, well, again, this is their win condition. Can Kana just essentially 1v1 over and over again? Stopwatch value. Doesn't matter. Viego is Viego. And he comes in, picks up the Away. kill. He's not trying to get in there. There's the bowling ball. Karyo's got the wall up already. As in goes Kana, nice little angle. They're going to be able to dodge the CC, and there's the steel owner gets in. And now he has to flash away. That is a massive steal, but can they get out of this alive is the question. Owner goes down, and everybody else is on the run. Bro are not going to be able to get anybody else, only the jungler. And this was actually miraculous for T1 because they are not able to set up for the fight. Faker's not able to do any poke. Okay, this is kind of a bit too oh much. Oh boy, they're sticking around. Gumi Yusi flashes, and there's the charm, and he is dead. He's going to try to trade it back, and you see Faker, they're trying to get scrappy here. But it is difficult once again. They want to use the power of Viego, but if you don't get a kill, it doesn't matter. He's not going to get those resets. Yeah, and they're just trying to run Fred at Breon around the map here, try to stop the push from going down. And they're doing a decent job of it, but people are going down one by one. Faker now trying to help out, trying to get the kill on the lava, but he will not be able to, and down they both go. And now Fred at Breon, they're looking for the push to end. They're looking for the push to end. Worst case scenario, they get the Baron, but I think they've got plenty enough with those increased death timers. Now Faker up down for 40 more seconds here. What a way to lose a game here for T1. Extreme greed, hoping that a reset for the Viego is going to turn the skirmish for them. I think they should have been more happy to take the Drake and walk away with only losing the Trundle. They look for more, cost them the game. Well, let's see, we got the Aphelios up here. We're looking to try to hang on to these turrets, but again, the Rakan, it's too reliable. They get into that back line under the turrets, and it will be too much. Fred Apriot 
will force a game number three. I agree. I, I think the right call would have just been to push bot and say, yeah, sure, go for Baron. We're going to take your inhibitor, right? And, you know, you can potentially threaten that. Maybe you get some teleports in. Rakan still had his ultimate. There were still so many tools left in the toolbox of the engage on the side of Fred at Breon. And... But they're like, make sure you have the uh, the orange juice <laughs> and the milk, right? And like, in this case, Braum is the milk and Leona yeah. is the orange juice. You could choose which drink you'd want to have with your breakfast, but... By the way, I don't think you should drink orange juice if you're also having cereal. What he offers you is, is much better here. Absolutely. So we are going to be jumping into game three as we do go into this one. Yes. Vertebrion. The spear will land, but that is just about that. I mean, Kana has his Narbar up, so I, I like this position here for Owner because he has a lot of agency here right now. Teleport coming through. There we go. There's the stun, but Spear takes a little bit longer. Jumping in, not able to secure that kill, but Faker will be able to, as now they're looking for a little bit more. Umpty underneath the turret stays around a little bit too long, and Faker perfectly able to tank that turret. And no hope for Lava. I can't, teleport was down. I can't remember the last time I saw Faker teleport in the early game to the top side of the map where it wasn't a great success for T1. They are so good at making these plays happen on the top side of the map where you look at, okay, I've got the resources set up here. Owner comes in. This is a three-step process, right? Owner comes over here, threatens the Silas, prevents his back, comes over, starts trading with Umpty, and Kana's like, I got my Narbar. Faker's here. Like, they call the teleport super early. He gets the dash through and gets the kill. This is so well set up, and it was set up moments before this. It's so perfect here. How much... It, it's hard to come back in this one. It really, really is, because you also don't have a comp that is going to empower this Viego pick as well, you know? All right, well, this is one way to do it. Kana getting baited into this one, but again, it's only Rakan, and you can see the amount of damage that the NAR can do from this point in time. Finally, the charm comes out. A little bit too little, too late, as yes, Kana might die, but he's able to pick up the kill 1v2, and everybody on the side of Fred Breon had to be down oh, here. Straight up 5v5 team fight. Owner is well and truly online as we're going to watch this from Kana. It's a bait here, but he actually ends up getting the second oh, on, ultimate, which is way better here. Into the wall. Okay. Wall of power. Ends up getting the kill. What the? Wants to get two, and then he's, yeah, like, oh, no. he's like, I'm just going to go for it. He's basically uh, saying, I'm going to die for this. And, saying, and, saying, and for, for T1, you're just not afraid of anything. Like You have no reason to fear walking into the jungle right now to take that vision <laughs> away. There's no turret. Yeah. There's nothing. Baker taking it very literally, and so his owner actually has to flash back over the wall. Maybe a little, you should be a little bit more afraid, but. <laughs> <laughs> Dial it back, maybe like one or two more numbers. Just a little bit less. From from pushing. So we have two win conditions on the map right now, and as part of Breon, you have to deal with both somehow. Ocean Rift, by the way, as the stun is going to come down here. The Braum ultimate from Lava actually is pretty nice. As now we get the engage, and this is one way they can get on in here. Faker is just unkillable, though, in that back line. As Hoya does get a lot of value, turns out to be a one for one. But a lot of low health bars here on the side of T1 and actually Fred at Breon. So. And they only lose the Braum. You know, it's a, it's a trade of supports here, but T1 are in a really nice spot with these low health bars to so maybe just step back, reset, and look for a Baron because Fred at Breon can't reset as quickly. They have to deal with this push. Thanks. That's yeah. basically a kill. Even though he's not dead, he can't participate. Yeah, for sure. It's kind of like the idea of Rumble as well, where it's like, oh, I just threw an equalizer and you have half health now, so you can't come in here. As they're trying to, but this amount of vision clear has been great. Trying to get into the pit now, but the Gnar ultimate over the wall, and the Viego just melts into that wall immediately. As now they're trying to get on top of Hoya. Baker didn't want to have to flash, but he will to pick up that kill. And now freelancing there in the middle. Says, well, we can just go into the mid lane, that's fine. He's got, I mean, they have the arrow available here, so, I mean, whenever they want to pull the trigger, once these turrets are down, is one of the easiest ways. Oh, that was cool. <laughs> But it is uh, Rakan. the gate. <laughs> if he gets somebody else, that's actually a kill, but he got the Rakan, sadly. Uh, well, we're just going to pretend that arrow didn't happen, but at least the spear landed. That was cool. Yeah. And uh, owner's, owner's been doing well on these. The Horizon Focus really paying off. And all you got to do is slow push here. Try not to get engaged upon. Uh, use your volleys, your spears, your brawl. To just keep them at a distance while you you take down their inhibitors. Who's your who's your player of the game? I'm putting you on the give spot. It to Faker. You give it to Faker again. Yeah. 
If you're a T1 fan, just enjoy the show. <laughs> Watch those spears connect, get excited, because that's what you're going to be watching a lot of, is the same sort of rinse and repeat push towards the inhibitors that become de more and more deadly as time goes on. You overextend his threat of Breon to try to get vision around this Baron. You might just lose right here, right now. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Well, here we go. This time the cleanse not available, so the team has to try to defend them. They do that decently well. That's actually the root does go down. Hoya trying to front line here a little bit, and a massive spear into that back line with the boomerang follow-up, and maybe now they will be able to kill that Aphelios. And that is going to be the nail in the coffin. They get a couple here in the mid lane, and they'll push for the victory. You have no choice of spread of Breon but to try to push towards Baron and remove that vision and hopefully win a scrappy team fight, but the push alone to try to get mid control, to get those wards cleared out, cost them. Big arrow, big spear, that's the game. T1, fantastic macro tonight in their two wins. The, the game they lost could ever win. And just dominate and crush, make very few mistakes. That's the kind of win you want to see after a faltering loss in game two, right? A big bounce back. Thank you very much, guys. This is season with the Nerva Translation, and we are here with Faker Kana after taking that for the brand after a very intense series. Congratulations, you guys are almost locked into the playoffs as well. How are you feeling, Faker? I think we kind of have to win almost the remaining matches in order to start on the high, higher seeding, you know? And I hope, I'm glad that we were able to get a really good start uh, of the remaining four matches. We are almost secured a spot in the playoffs, but we have to win almost the every matches remaining in order to start on the um, higher seeding. Kana, uh, we are seeing you often here in the POD interview. You are popping off and wrapping up, um, heading into the end of the second round. Do you also feel the same way? Yeah, I think I'm play playing pretty well. Faker, what do you think of Kana's current form? Kana kind of lost his memory, but I, got, I, th I guess he got his memory back finally. Faker, I want to ask you about game number one, Draft. I thought you would play Azir, but you actually carried the game on LeBlanc. Was Azir on the... Um, your lists as well. It was a strategy, you know, tactical decision. I haven't been playing LeBlanc that much, but LeBlanc is a really good pick in the meta. So I decided to play LeBlanc this time around. <laughs> you know, back in my days, uh, Faker LeBlanc was a big thing, says Kuro. Well, we saw Kyria hovering Gragas and TF uh, at the end of the last pick. Was that the TF support, maybe? That's, you know, Kyria, he has a wide and deep champion ocean. He can just play every champion as support. And Kana, you were the one who, who kind of brought your team to victory with your macro and sideline play. And owner and Guma Yuzi was like, is this the end already? So what kind of plan did you guys have? I mean, they got pretty fed, but I think it was me saying that, you know, it was a bummer that it ended so quick because I got so fed, but I was not able to come, you know, join any team fight. I was only just taking down turrets. You know, that, that was what exactly happened. And Freddy Prion decided to put Lava after losing game number one. What has changed? Uh, according to the um, different mid laner that you are facing off uh, in the um, waiting room or green room, I kind of told my team that I would repeat the same LeBlanc play that I played in game number one. So I got a little bit too aggressive in game two. It didn't really work well because two players have different play style. It, all, it is all reflected in their play style, but I still wanted to play the same kind of laning phase. After losing game two, T1 decided to take the Renekton away and completed the Renekton in the early comp. Tell us about it. Freon put Renekton on a very high priority in game one and two. So we decided to take it this time around. 
And for me, especially, I can pilot every champion, so it was for the strategy. <laughs> Renekton and Nidalee were sitting on 2 and 9 uh, match record here in the LCK Summer. Tell us about it as well. It's because we haven't been playing it that much, you know? Kana, do you also agree? Renekta Nidalee is a mid jungle duo and also a top jungle duo. I didn't play Renekton this day, so I have no idea about it. In game 3, you guys were able to get so ahead around the top side of the map. You had about 5k gold lead at around 15 minute mark in the game. Was that something you guys expected before the game started? It was Gwen versus Nara matchup, and I always played on the Gwen side. It was my first time playing on the Nara side, and then Hoya was hiding in the brush, and then, you know, he with the Doran's blade, he with the ghost, he was able to bully me so hard in the beginning. And Faker said Hana would be the MVP, um, the team MVP after winning the Africa series. What about this time around? Today, I think owner, because owner today kind of. Um, he didn't really get to play the carry picks, you know. I could see a little bit of a, you know, I thought he was a little bit bummed that he wasn't playing something hyper carry picks, but I want to, you know, cheer him up that he can also contribute to his team with those kind of supportive picks. And you will face up Genji in the upcoming series. And are you guys confident to repeat the victory in the first round, Robin? In the second round, I think we are performing better than the first round. So, we want let our guards down, we will do our best in the upcoming Gen G series as well. I watched their series yesterday and they were doing great. Especially Bird always playing, you know, we used to be a very close friend, still a very close friend, so it's gonna be a very exciting one, facing him off on the top lane. And this will be the end of the interview from Faker Kana from T1, and I'm gonna pass it back to our casters, thank you!